Welcome to your new unit on absolute value and absolute value functions. Uh, however, the key word here is functions. We have to remind ourselves what functions are and all the cool things about them like domain and range and all that kind of stuff uh, before we can uh, move on to learn about absolute values. So let's just review some of the stuff that we did in grade 10 um, and there'll be some practice at the end of this section so that you can, uh, you can get all practiced up. So when we're talking about a relation, uh, a line is a relation, a quadratic is a relation. It's just an association between, and this is my shorthand for between, two quantities. Um, it can be presented in words as an equation. Table of values, we are familiar with those. Don't forget ordered pairs. Now an ordered pair is just um, three, seven, something like that. Or, last but not least, a graph. So there are lots of ways that we can express um, uh, relations. What about functions? Now, functions are a very specific kind of relation. So a function is a relation uh, in which each independent variable value, which we usually associate with x, though, I mean, if you're thinking about in terms of physics, um, you're probably going to see time as our independent a lot, but in math, we, we generally associate that with x. Um, so a relation in which each independent variable value is associated with one and only one value or one dependent variable value. And we usually in math associate that with y, though um, it's going to be really important uh, in grade 11 and 12 pre-calculus to be flexible in your thinking. Uh, this could be any letter Okay, and this could be any letter. This is your independent variable, that's the most important part, um, and it's horizontal, and this is your dependent variable, which it goes on the vertical axis. So, um, oftentimes when we talk about functions, we talk about vertical line tests, and what is that exactly? It's a test to see if a graph is a function if any vertical line crosses the graph. At more than one point the function or oh, sorry the relation is not a function so for example if I just change colors here I can draw a vertical line at any point in this one and it only touches once there 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 that means it's one-to-one that means for every x value, 
assuming that this is x and this is y uh value there is one sorry one x value there is one y value so this right here is indeed a function well, let me just change colors here and let's do the vertical line test on this one Whoop. What? Okay, so here it only touches once, but here and here it touches twice on that vertical line. Here and here. And it's important that's a vertical line, not a not an oblique line in any way, but a vertical line. So it touches twice here. So that means in some cases one x value produces two y values. So this is not a function. Let's take down some definitions about exactly what a domain and range is. Now we kind of used kind of a, um, uh, we used what a domain and range was for our quadratics unit, um, but I want to go into the nitty gritties and let's just let's just talk about what a domain is and what a range is. So a domain is all possible values for the independent variable. So this is all x's in a general sense and how we generally use it in math. And the range is all possible values for the dependent variable, which for mathematical purposes generally, generally is y. So I want us to spend a little bit of time stating the domain and range of the following three, <laughs> should we see here, the following three um, relations. So I want you to do it in, uh, I want you to express it in set notation and interval notation. Set notation is very, way more mathematical. Um, interval notation uh, is a little bit more visual, if you can, if you can imagine that. Um, but we'll go through it. So first things first, let me just graph this line. Now you might have just had a strike of terror in your heart because you forget how to graph lines from last year. No problem. The next uh, lesson will be all about graphing lines of various, uh, just a, a review of graphing lines from various forms. Um, I'm just going to go through this very quickly. This right here is in slope intercept form. So if you didn't quite, if you don't quite get it from this uh, little tutorial, don't worry about it. There'll be um, bigger, uh, a larger, um, more focused lesson tomorrow. So I know that my x-intercept is, oh sorry, my y-intercept is 3. Don't forget to put my uh, axis labels and my, um, uh, my scale. So I know that my y-intercept is 3 and I know that my slope is 2. So up 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and here is my line. Boop! That wasn't super successful there. There we go. Great. So let's figure out what the domain and range of this is. Now, we can say that there's nothing, like, there's nothing stopping this line from going down to infinity, and there's nothing stopping this line uh, from going up to infinity. So that means um, with the range, because that has to do with our, with our y's, we can say y is an element of the reals. So this right here is going to be your set notation, and I'll always do set notation first. Another way we can say it is it stretches on from negative infinity to positive infinity. 
The reason why I'm using round brackets is because infinity is never something that you can like pinpoint down. Um, so uh, it's just an approximate value. The, the round brackets are very much like are greater than or equal to. I'll show you what, um, uh, sorry, greater than or less than. I'll show you in the next uh, what the square brackets represent. Now for the domain, it can extend to the right to infinity and to the left to infinity. So we can say x is an element of the reals. It can be any number that you can think of that's real. No imaginary numbers. Don't get all fancy. Or, oh, just so that I can write this down, this right here is interval notation. I'm going to express the same domain in interval notation, which is negative infinity to positive infinity. Done. All right. So let's look at this right here, this next one. So the domain first, we're going to deal with set notation. In fact, I'll make a little setup for set notation. And here for the same in interval notation. So when we zoom in here, I'm saying that the domain goes from, now we know that each one of these tick marks is one. So from one, two, one, two, three, four, five. It goes from one till five. And in this, it goes from positive 2 in the vertical axis, the dependent, goes from positive 2 to negative 2. So we have a perfect circle because it's 4 units this way and it's 4 units this way. That means the diameter is 4. Um, so what I'm going to say with the domain, I'm going to say x such that, and I put my lower value, 1 is greater than or equal to x greater than or equal to 5, and x is an element of the reals. And what we can also do here is put the curly Q brackets around it, okay? How is that with interval notation? You're going to love this, folks, okay? Because I'm going to say x goes from 1 till 5, and I'm going to put square brackets around it. I use curly brackets here when it doesn't quite include that value, okay, because you can't really capture infinity. But when we know that 5 is included in the interval, we just put square brackets around it. So this guy right here is kind of like our greater than or uh, uh, greater than or equal to. So it's kind of like our closed dot, if you think about it that way. Um, now the range has to go with the up and down. First, we're going to do this in set notation. So y such that it goes from negative 2 greater than or equal to y greater than or equal to 2, y is an element of the reals. And again, in interval notation, so much easier. I know that 4 is included, oh sorry, I know that 2 is included and negative 2 is included. I'm literally going to go negative 2, positive 2. The smaller one on this side, the bigger one on this side, done. So much easier, way less writing. Um, so you guys uh, will be um, expected to understand uh, how to read both ways of expressing domains and ranges, and you'll have more practice about it. This one's a little bit trickier, uh, but don't worry about it. So set notation first, x such that. So we know that this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And it goes to, oh, it goes actually to infinity here. So we start at negative 3. But since it's an open dot here, it means that it's, it, it has, it, like it has in the domain everything except for negative 3, but everything leading up to. So negative 2.999999999999, but just not negative 3. So then we're going to use that. Um, we'll, we'll use the inequality that looks like this. So negative 3 is um, negative 3 is less than x. Um, 
or sorry, uh, x is greater than negative 3, however you want to say it. Now I could leave it like this, or I could flip it. I could say x is greater than negative 3 and just leave it at that. And x is an element of the reals. So that's in set theory, uh, sorry, that's in set notation. Not set theory, that's something different. Or if you wanted to do it in interval notation, you would say negative 3 because it begins at negative 3, but you would put the round bracket in because it doesn't actually include that negative 3, comma, infinity. Now with infinities, we're always, because when we follow this through, it goes here, goes here, goes here, has this value of 1, but then bounces down here and goes on to infinity. So that would be our domain. Our range is a little bit different. y such that now our our lowest level is um when we look at our our y okay or our dependent variable it can go down forever and ever and ever and ever but the greatest that it can be is one two three four five okay so x so sorry y is less than no, that's great. Y is less than or equal to, because we have the closed dot here, is Y is less than or equal to 5. Here's the other thing, though. Y cannot equal, there's no value for here because there are two open dots. So when we go down 5, 4, 3, 2, oh, not 1, okay? This one right here is uh, is not available to you. So we have to say Y cannot equal one but x sorry not x but y is an element of the reals so this one's a little bit trickier because there are going to be two parts of this okay because there's the piece where y is less than five and also y cannot equal negative one but when we have our interval notation we say and we start from the the smallest up so we can go negative infinity to positive 1, round brackets on all of them, then we say union, that means and 1 to positive 5. And we would use a square bracket here because we have a filled in dot, that means that 5 is, is attached to that. Okay, so this, because there are two sections, we have this one that go a straight line that goes from negative infinity to all the way up to one, but doesn't include one. And then we bump just above one to five. 